Hey everyone, welcome to Nerds Talk. I'm Mike. And I'm Chris. And today we are doing episode 11 of The Bad Batch. That's right, it's called uh, Devil's Deal. Yeah. And we'll be going through that for you. Um, again, if you're new to the channel, don't worry, we're not going to spoil it right off the bat. We'll kind of give you our, our overview thoughts on what we thought of this particular episode. So Chris, take it away, Devil's Deal. Yeah, uh, so again, I enjoyed it. I'm not sure. So it's a bit of a different episode, to be honest yes. with you. Yes, definitely um, different. I enjoyed it as a Star Wars fan. Mm -hmm. I think this one was made for Star Wars fans in, in mind, not just the casual fans. Yes, absolutely. Um, so without going into too much detail, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was really nice, and it kind of ties in with earlier things in, in the series. But uh, overall, I thought it was really good. We might be in a different... It, it all depends on your experiences with Star Wars and what you've seen, what you've watched, and what you've read. Uh, to get the most out of this this episode in particular, for sure. But how about you? I couldn't agree more. Uh, I definitely think that this episode is trying to set something larger up yes. for the future of Star Wars, yeah. and that's the most that I can say. Um, I enjoyed it a lot, uh, getting to see more of the Star Wars universe. That's yes. the best I can say. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that was really cool. Um, I thought, um, you know, kind of seeing where we're at in the timeline now, but kind of the start of things and like, kind of like how how things because we know how things are going to progress exactly right? yeah. so how we're going to how the, the start of that and like how we kind of get there and kind of see the beginning of the prequel so to yeah it's like the prequels where we know anakin turns into darth vader so yes. we know that process but not how it, how it happens. happens per se exactly so this is kind of similar to that where this is like a prequel to something that happens in the future in the universe yeah. and we're kind of seeing how it develops which is yeah. very exciting yeah, I thought it was a really nice, cool thing. And, and again, it comes back to like every episode always trying to call back or reminisce or just connect different uh, places, characters, things from all sorts of different medium, whether it's yeah. from movies, other shows, uh, video games, comics, books, whatever. They just find a way to just throw things in. And I thought it was really, really cool how they did this. Yeah. So. Now, this one felt more like a Clone Wars episode more yes. than anything else. Like it yes. could have fit right in with... Season seven of the Clone Wars, if they had an extra episode or arc or, or anything like Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. I think they could have easily put this in. Yeah, and, I, and it kind of makes you wonder, it, was that part an of his plan? Uh, and then because it was done and they kind of let him do another season to to bridge, Just for, yeah. he's like, well, this is how I'll kind of do the things I didn't get to do. Exactly. I'm gonna I think in. 100% that this is what he's like, well, you know, I have this medium now that I can kind of use uh, and make it work essentially and they, he probably just tweaked his storyboards a little bit and and, and made it work so very yeah. exciting so i mean th there's our spoiler free section uh good episode definite watch um and now we'll jump into the spoiler heavy section so if you haven't watched the episode you want to stop here watch the episode then come back so we can, can reveal you know what we're talking about um and with that i guess we'll dive right in so devil's deal is all yes. about Rebels, essentially. Hera yeah. from Rebels. Hera and Chopper. Yeah, and her family. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because we see her dad in the Re in a Rebels episode. Do we see her mom? I no. I think we see no, her, her mom. I'm her pretty dad. sure her mom was dead. I think so as well. When, when she came back to the planet. Yeah. On, in Rebels. When she went back and all that kind of stuff with Thrawn and, and he had the Calicori. That's right. He, it, he set up his base essentially in the palace that they were fighting yes. in, I believe. Yes, but I'm pretty sure her mom was, was dead already. So, did she talk about how she was killed or whatever? No, Not that right? I recall. So, I think this is how we will find I out. I think we will definitely find out here. How she dies. And this is really the push that Hera and Chopper get. And to, her father to like really... Yes, go against the rebellion and, and start to, and, and fight back against them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is an excellent storyline. Uh, in the first episode, we saw Kanan, mm -hmm. which is also part of Rebels. Uh, so, it's kind of tying like a... Will there be, is this part of the Ezra thing or will there be another season of Rebels or will there be an offshoot or is this just, this is how it started and Rebels is Rebels. So there's lots of things, but it's beautiful that they are able to bring this into frame to show the background of Rebels, which we both agree is one of the best uh, shows the Star Wars has done. Oh, it's it's, it's been great. And I, I love to get to see young Hera. Her yes. starting, she she dreams about becoming a pilot. We all know yeah, like, you're going to be an amazing go. pilot. Yes. We only know you're going to get there. But seeing her, like, I want to do this. And her uncle is basically the one that's training her and getting her into being a, a spy. And, and spy and rep, yeah, like fighting for herself and learning, you know, all these tips and tricks and everything. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. This is a Bad Batch episode, but we only see them <laughs> once for like a quick kind of cameo. Yeah, it's all about Ryloth. Yeah. It, it, the whole thing takes place at Ryloth. And the only time we see Bad Batch is because Sid is the informant 
that uh, the uncle, I can't remember the uncle's name, but basically uh, Paul, Hera's uncle, yeah, to get guns, to get more weapons, weapons yeah, yeah. Um, because the Empire has come and basically seized them, and the the current Prime Minister, and I, his name, because he was right in now. Clone Wars as well, he was with the really heavy set yeah. Twilight. And so he basically agrees to the Empire and says, we're going to get rid of all the weapons. We don't need them anymore. Uh, but the uncle doesn't feel right. He doesn't feel like this is PC. He feels like, you know, they shouldn't get And even Hera's mom is kind of yes. similar to the uncle because, you know, she's like, well, they're keeping secrets from us. They're doing a refinery on, on their, their planet, Ryloff. And, but they're not really telling what it's all about. And then yes. she sees Gunner um, turrets, essentially, and things like that. So... They were told it wasn't a military base and they're getting rid of all their weapons, but you know, the Imperials are bringing weapons over and they're setting up some sort of base, which is said to be in a refinery, but it's turned right. out to be more of a military base, which I think, are they, they are refining things, but I think it's to build more machines for the Republic. I think that was one and of the And a prison camp, hubs. essentially, because we find out in Rebels that they're enslaved. That's right. Yeah. And so she's there and they have a uh, small guerrilla group of people to fight back and so yeah, the fighters yeah yeah and so the uncle and the mom to a certain extent says you know we shouldn't give up so easily yeah we want peace but you know we should still always have the ability to defend ourselves should something turn and, right. and, and i think that's smart and so they they reach out to sid and sid is going to send them weapons at a rendezvous point which is the time where they meet up with the bad batch and i thought it was a really cool moment because again here's where we see uh hera get introduced to Omega, Omega yes. and they have a contact and they're about the same age. So it, it kind of, again, is setting this up. Are we going to see Omega again? Is there going to be this purpose of like, she's connected to the rebels. She's going to have something, maybe a show or something spin off. And then, yeah, now the rebels are going to surround her. Yeah. Like there's so much stuff there's, that they could do. There's supposed to be an Ezra live action, isn't there? With Thrawn and everything. I heard about that, but I don't know. Is it still going to be live action? Is it going to be heard. animated? I mean, it would be ideal to be animated. And just continue. All the characters are animated. You know, all the voices are there. Everything would be very well done animated wise, yeah. I feel. If they're doing live action, I would assume they'd be introduced in Ahsoka's show because she is hunting down Thrawn and looking for Ezra That's or whatever, right? right? But right. she's but she specifically said Mandalorian, where's Thrawn? Her goal is to get Thrawn. I'm assuming because wherever Thrawn is is probably where Ezra is. Yeah. But uh I don't think she had that direct connection with Ezra as much, like his buddy buddy Sub friendship yeah. as much as, you know, so she being in the other rebels. They had yeah. that, you know, he was part of the team, essentially. Well, he was not essentially. He was part of the team. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. Yes. Um, I think at the very least we'll see a, see a live action thrown in Ahsoka uh, show. Um, will we see Ezra show up there? It's a possibility. Um, we know that, uh, again, spoilers for, for Rebels, Kanan is no longer with us, but he does have a son with Hera. That's so right. we could see the son, possibly, right? There's yeah. so many things that we can pick up with. And I do think Omega is definitely going to show up outside of this show. I think she's going to show up. They're setting her up, having all these interactions for a reason. And yeah. I think it's either Book of Boba Fett, being a sister to Boba Fett. They're really going to drill in that. And maybe, you know, maybe in that, that time period, she is holed up with Hera. Maybe there's a relationship there and she joins the rebel cause or something. And so maybe she's going to be on the show. I don't know, but I think there's a reason why they're connecting. I mean, they're people. really pumping her high, which is great because she's a strong, young female character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and now I have another guess of what her, her power is. I think they might have tried to mix all the Bad Batch abilities into her now. Maybe not. Oh, okay. Maybe okay. not uh, force ability, but more of... Like a jack of all trades versus... Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, they're like, oh, we did all these experiments on these individuals. Let's combine them all into one. She can be the best of all the elite troopers. You know, she was able to snipe like Crosshair was. She picks up tracking and things like... And, and strategic like Hunter does. Mm -hmm. uh, with tech, you know, she's learning the gadgets. She's learning... She's, you know... She's... So tech won't let her fly, we learn in this episode, until she memorizes all the... You know, buttons and controls yes. and everything on the ship but she seems she was able to pick it up to hair and tell her what all the things were yes. very quickly so yes. she seems very technical as well and smart that way and then wrecker you know she likes the fun she she doesn't mind mixing it up if she needs to and the weapons and, and everything like that she and she's a strategist and she, we find out <laughs> yeah yeah so i think they kind of tried to mix like an ideal trooper essentially and see how she works out that way yeah, that's very possible. And uh, being that she is the prime or the closest to the original uh, okay. DNA, yeah. she would be very close to, or almost exact like uh, a Boba Fett in terms of how close they are to Jango Fett. So that's right. she is going to be very powerful. She's going to be very skillful. And I think that's where very 
quickly shaping up to kind of, you know, it, the, here's the question. She's being raised and groomed by the Bad Batch, but this is does something happen and she fall to the wayside? Does she become a mercenary? Or could she be the yin to the yang of Boba Fett? Maybe maybe Boba Fett's trying to take over and she's trying to stop him. True. Maybe they're butting heads or, you know. But he did seem to join up with Mandalorian very easily. He could have just been like, I'm taking you down, fight him, take his stuff back. But he, he teamed up with him. Well, he does have a code. Yeah. He joined him on his mission to get Grogu back. He gave him a promise and he stuck to his promise. And he fulfilled it. Yeah. And then he went back with Fennec and killed Bit Fortuna. He's like, this is my place now, which is cool. Yeah. But it kind of makes you wonder, like, everyone saw him as, like, he's just a bounty hunter, but he did side a lot with the Empire. But yeah, now where we, the money was. But now we're proven well. that he does have a code and he's willing to help yeah those who are i mean the empire were in charge and they were the most powerful during his time when he was working with the empire so yeah. he, it's not like he could maybe he did work for the rebels or did things when they could pay him mm -hmm. but we never saw it on the film maybe we'll learn in the book of boba fett or maybe even in some other series that he did jobs with the rebels or helped them out or, yeah. or whatever it may be. he did hate jedi because of mace window That's killing true. his father yes. And we see that in the Clone Wars. Yes. But, you know, things have come a long way and things may have changed. We'll have to wait and see. But, I mean, we've only seen him interact right now with Mandalorian and he's no Jedi. Uh, right? He hasn't pump crossed with Ahsoka or anything like that. So, yeah. maybe in the Book of Boba Fett, if he does show up with... Uh, I mean, this is this is after the movie, so you wouldn't see, like, Kenobi or anything. But if he bumps up with Luke after the initial yeah. combat, will there be a scene... Well, like, I don't know. It'll be pretty interesting to see kind of wh who they introduce and how they do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But they have, I mean, they've been so smart with it, especially with Filoni and, yeah. and Farver. Uh, Farver. They've just been really, really smart about really catering to the Star Wars fan base and giving them what they want or, because or, they are the fans essentially as well. And they know the, everything front to back essentially. And, you know, they're trying to give back and make it, legit and 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 you know not crazy or silly or or just for money they're doing it things for a reason and a purpose that's right now uh just to give a quick recap of the show the main the main leader the the husky blue twilight i can't that's remember right. his name right now he uh is pretty much in bed with the empire and he we takes see that money, he takes yeah he yeah and so him. he want he does not like the sandula family they are higher up they have the favor of the people um, and so while he can't just like kill them, arrest them, he yeah. doesn't want them around. And so we see that very clearly in the episode when he's trying to find a way to get rid of them. And he's telling the empire, this is your problem. Like he's drilling it in. Like, yes. Get rid of them. The people that cause the most trouble, they have the voice of the people. They will be able to do a revolt if, if anything happens and things like that. Yeah. And so as the, the episode progresses, uh, they find, uh, there is a specific clone trooper, which I don't remember if he has a name, but he's got a teal. Yeah. Looks like, like Rex, but he's got a teal pad instead of a dark blue pad. pad. Toner, or trucker, or... I can't remember. I think it starts with a T, but yeah. yeah. It's definitely a new tro trooper. Trooper. And so he's there with his helmet off and everything, and he seems to like friends of the people or friends of the Sindulas at some point. But obviously he's, he's chipped, and so he's going to do what the Empire requires. And so they're caught... Uh, or Sin Harris Harris caught spying on that the facility. facility, and so he says, "Listen, because of our relationship, I'm not going to arrest you, but don't do this again." He says he's kind of in a tight spot with the Empire, which was funny. The troop, like the <clears throat> troopers and the Empire, kind of he seemed a bit different as well. Like maybe the chip was wearing off. Like how long? It was interesting because most of them were like, "You're disobeying. You're under arrest. You're, you know." And he was very much like, "Listen, we have a relationship. I'm gonna let you go." No other clone has under the Empire's influence would yeah. do that. So he did seem different, yeah. but. At the same time, when the Empire had orders for him, he fell fall through. So it was an interesting kind of situation with him. And, and I don't know, maybe that's why he had his helmet off. They wanted him to stand out yeah. apart from the other clones on the planet. Um, but he basically gave them a, a chance to like... Um, they, when, the, when the main guy finds out that she was involved and they're on their way back... Um, sorry, when they, when they head off uh, to go get the arms deal... Uh, she gets crosshair. talked into joining her uncle because she's like, oh, I'm not allowed. But he's like, oh, I was going to let you, let you fly. fly. And that's what Kinda she wants to do. Into it and then, yeah. So they peel off. Um, and so Crosshair, crosshair. shoots a, a targeting a tracking, tracking yeah, beacon on yeah. it. They head off, meet the Bad Batch, do the whole exchange, get the weapons, come back. And so he has an Empire crew waiting for them. They get them arrested. They check the ship, see that they're carrying illegal contraband or in this case weapons. Um, and so when they radio it in... He says, uh, you know, I want them arrested. And, and obviously, they can't frame the parents. The parents says, we don't have proof that they are involved, but the daughter is. So he says, yeah. okay, let's go. And she's tried for treason. Let's kill the daughter. 
and that'll draw, essentially draw the parents yeah. out. And then the trooper actually informs them that she was caught and that they've been trialed already. And they said, but she hasn't even had a real trial. That's right. She's been, you know, caught. And she's saying, but she's a child. And, yeah. and they're like, we don't care. We're doing this. So they do it. The word gets to the to the parents. So they head off to go intercept, essentially, this, this transport with her on it. And so they go, they, they attack it, they held them up at gunpoint, who comes out, but the main leader, who wants them arrested, the Empire, and the Empire is saying they're not really doing anything. He says, what are you doing? Arrest them, do whatever. And so the, uh, the Harris father is, is wanting to kill him, but doesn't. Yeah. And because he doesn't kill it, Crosshair then ends up taking out the leader, and then they now frame him and says, you're wanted for arrest for That's killing right. the leader. Yeah. So now they have a uh, reason to uh, get the Sindulas in trouble, they have the leader gone, which they didn't want anyway. Exactly. They wanted full control. Yeah. So now they have full control. They have the the leaders in, in trouble, and, and now they have them framed. And so this is how they're going to try to take enslave the planet, essentially. And I think, is that Admiral Piet that's there? I don't think it's he, Piet. Piet? I don't think it's him. I is thought he was him? the main guy that's running the, the was it him? I thought it was the same guy who was doing the training in the in the second episode with Tarkin. Wasn't that the same guy who was doing the training, who sent Crosshair on the mission? I didn't think it was Piet. We well, could maybe. be wrong. Yeah. Well, we can, we can search <laughs> we'll find it, it later. But anyway, yeah. So that was an interesting, like, again, making a deal, right? He made a deal with the Empire, trying to have his way. They didn't care about him. They found no. a way to get rid of yeah. him and get rid of the problem, which he brought to light. The Sindulas are a problem. They got them arrested. Uh, Hera and Chopper escape, yes. essentially. Yeah. Uh, they said, like, Chopper, get Take her out yeah. of here. And so he drives the ship. And it's so cool that she had Chopper from the get-go. Yes. So in one of the scenes, there's, like, a, a fallen Y-wing. And mm. I think we learned in Rebels that Harris saved Chopper from a Y Wing that crashed. Oh, okay. And then we kind of built him and fixed them, and then from they've been parts, together yeah. from there. So it was interesting to see that there was wreckage of a Y Wing in one of the backgrounds that I noticed. So that might have been how she first got him, and, and they've been together ever since. Yeah. Yeah, that long, strong bond together. Yeah, which is really awesome. So we have a bit of Kidding's past, we have a bit of Harris past. Are we going to see them bump past in the Bad Batch? Are we going to see them? Oh, I would hope Are we so. going to see uh, a Zeb? A I get Zeb a little bit of his background before they all come together. It'll be interesting if somehow the Bad Batch somehow pieces them together. Yes. And I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see, but it's a, it's, it's a really cool premise because I don't think they're going to do a Rebels prequel much much more than a sequel or like you said, a live action. So um, I thought it was really, really awesome how they showed her background, her fighting spirit, her being like, you know, wet under the ears, but at the same time hungry for that life yeah. and being even at a young age being useful and being able to like learn how to spy and learn how to, yeah. to even fly, fly the ship yeah. and stuff like that right yeah now what was also interesting is the next episode is going to be a continuation of this oh it is the way it ended it has yeah. to be so this will be another arc so maybe a two or three more episodes of this <clears throat> who else will we see like you said like will will we see kane and join up and help well, Kanan's on a different planet. The last we saw him, he was on that stone planet. I don't think yeah. he got, jumped on a ship and then Ryloth. But if but she escapes pretty, and yeah. they both end up in the same place, that's definitely possible. Yeah. Or maybe he went there to hide, thinking that the rebel rebellion went, or the uh, Imperials wouldn't go there, and now they're there and trying to take over. Lots of possibilities, but um, I would love to see more about the rebels and, and their backgrounds and the early stages and things like that. So I'm happy there's going to be a second episode to show more of Hera and Chopper. Will we see how who, they bump into Sabine? Yeah. She'll be very knows. young. I mean, she's like Ezra's age, and they're the youngest on the crew, so we, they might be too young at this point. But we do know that when they meet Ezra, which is in the very first episode of Rebels, yeah. uh, the other team is already put together. So Zeb, Hera, and at least Kanan have a history. Yeah. Uh, I think Sabine though, is the newest Sabine recruit. Is, yeah, pretty new and still wants to get involved and right. be told about you know what's going on. And That's right. Like that. So maybe it might be too soon for Sabine, but, but Zeb, but Zeb, like yeah, Zeb could definitely be. Yeah, it could be huge for, for Zeb or anyone else in that matter. Yeah, and I thought the, the exchange between Omega and Hera is trying to show the difference with like how tech and them are very military oriented. And like, this is how you fly and this is how you think. And Hera's like, it's about a feeling. It's not about like following rules and stuff. And like you want to be a good pilot, you have to feel, you have to know when to turn and when to shoot and what how to, how to fly and be a great pilot. And that's the, what separates like a Poe Dameron and a Hera to like a droid pilot who is like, this is the best computational moves that give me the highest success versus like yeah sometimes the 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 smallest chance of success the riskiest is what pays off the exactly. best and, and that's the difference right so i think omega trying to understand like it's how you feel it and like it's more than just 
following rules. And Omega's, again, learning that there's more to the galaxy than just what the clones know. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, definitely. And I think we'll get more of the Bad Batch because I think they'll be the, the ones that are sent in to save Hera's parents. Yes. And, and things like that. And will this be how Hera's mom dies? Is this how they meet it with Crosshair because he's on the planet? Yeah. Yeah. So there's lots of possibilities there because, yeah, because they'll uh, obviously have to cross uh, cross hair again you know yeah. come across him and uh it'll be interesting to see will he join the team will he forever be lost will he turn into an elite you know dark trooper or star so, trooper or anything so here's my prediction so he looks like he's a death trooper with like the greenish visor and the black suit i think what's going to happen as we taper off in the last five episodes i think that they're going to get him back in this arc and the, the Imperial leader guy that's there, because remember, he's doing tests and they're trying to that's see right. if the clones are viable and they're having clones train the stormtroopers. And I think this will be the last point when the clone that has a chip, they're able to free him and turn him over. They're going to say, that's it. Clones are worthless. We're just going to go stormtroopers and cut the but clones off. But they have his DNA, essentially. Will Correct. Will they turn him in? Will this be the first part of Death Trooper program? I think so. So I think he's going to start off the elite um, and the people who work with him are going to, you know, know some cool stuff but when they realize that the Bad were able to get him back away from the Empire they go get rid fully of the ship, human they're gonna say okay clones are cut off maybe kill the clones yeah. and hire stormtroopers to kill the clones and will this be where the uprising of Camino out. starts and then they have that battle that's very there possible. as well which would be amazing because that's a great that's a great finale out. and then that's the official like at the end of the Bad Batch now it's stormtroopers clones are gone we've officially like made the change yeah, there's only a few clones left still that are just you know, they, they've been left behind, like Rex and so on. Wolf, so, Gregor, all those guys, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it'll be very interesting to see that. Because we've seen a lot of calls to Rebels and Clone Wars, which is great. So I, I'd love to see more Rebels called out as well. So. Yeah, and I think we'll probably see some more bounty hunters. We have Cad Bane and Fennec, and I think that we're going to see more of that to kind of maybe spill out their stories and kind of give us more. Maybe there'll be a bounty hunter show and kind yeah. of what's going on in the world of bounty hunter besides Mandalorian. Like, it would be cool to see Cad Bane... Uh, move on Boba Fett him yeah. kind of get to where he is a notorious bounty hunter before episode five um who else is out there Bosk yes uh you know the all these big names we see in Empire none of them have really had stories outside of the book so seeing Zuckus Forlom and even Dengar you know outside of um um the Freemakers like seeing these characters and seeing like what made them so ruthless what made them the best the, the best, best. Yeah. have stories interact with like this is a perfect way to connect the old with the new but keep it interesting and keep it fresh and again a lot of people are like, oh, Jedi Force, it's always been done. It's the same old, same old. As much as I love that, I could see them doing more bounty hunter and like non-Force special yeah. stories. And, and it does well. Yeah, definitely. And it tells, it adds to the universe and, and you know, the character development and backgrounds. Because, yeah, Darth Vader obviously called the ones that he called in for bounty hunters because they're the best of the best. Yeah. But what made them the best of the best and mm -hmm. how did they become that way? So it'd be great to see that. We see a little bit of it in Clone Wars at the beginning when... Bobo teams up with a few of them and meets, um, you know. I guess. He does a mission with Aura Singh, Bosk, Bosk, Cad Bane himself, and I think there's one more. Yeah. I don't think it's Greedo. No, there's another guy. But I don't remember his name. Yeah, but they're like starting together. And it's yeah. like, okay, the, you know, they've had run-ins with each other. And then there's, you know, IG-88. He's out there. Is he a, a somehow a, a, a genetic, not a genetic, he's a robot, but like, uh, leftover remnants of IG-11 somehow translated through these other droids or is he just a new version of that droid we, you know we'll have to kind of see where they where, how they fit these characters in but I would love to see more of these backgrounds and especially if these characters again make friendships and introduce new characters yes. and the lore so like we have Fennec Shan introduced in and in, in uh, Mandalorian who's not going to be a, a standard in Book of Boba Fett That's right. but kind of see her background and then you know Cad Bane we don't see him in Empire so maybe he does die maybe he gets killed yes. maybe he gets betrayed by another bounty hunter maybe we'll see that in whether it's this show or the next show that kind of pieces us between um but why not show us a little bit more about these other killers who we know survive what makes them the best of the best? It'd be awesome to see them cross paths. A hundred percent. I would love it. Definitely. Awesome. So any last thoughts about uh, Devil's Deal? No, I'm just looking forward to it. Uh, it felt really short for some reason. When it cut off, I was like, oh. I, yeah, I it ends with the hero more. hiding yeah. behind like a pole as the, as the uh, it's not, is it crosshairs or is it just regular Imperial Troopers? I can't remember who's there. I think it's just re regular just like a, Yeah, just like a battalion kind of arrives and is like. I guess looking for her and looking for them. So yeah. it ends with her hiding behind a pillar and it kind of creates the black. Um, so yeah. Uh, good episode. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to it. Uh, 
But like we said, definitely, if you've seen Rebels, this is really for you um, and really for the, you know, the Star Wars fans more than just casual fans. Casual fans will still enjoy it. Um, you know, you can learn about Hera. You don't need to know that she's a rebel in this episode. You know, that's down the line. Um, but, you know, this is the beginning of her, I guess, experience and, and future. But... Uh, yeah. So it's good for the casual fan, but really, really great for the, you know, true Star Wars, you know, fanatics and fans. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Definite watch. Um, I, I can say that my, my son was a little disappointed that there was very little Bad Batch. He's like, this is called Bad Batch. Where's Bad so Batch? This is so disappointing. So I can't mine. believe this. And I was like, but but aren't you excited to see, like, you love Rebels. Aren't you excited to see her? Aren't you excited to see this character? But a lot of them were, you know, Twi'leks and clones and just people you don't know mm -hmm. that I guess for younger kids they, it doesn't draw the interest the big Star Wars fans yeah. that have seen everything and have, have read all the stuff you know yeah it, it, it that's for us and I think it's for the younger audience they want they are they're here to watch the show for the bad batch yeah and when they're missing it's it's a little disheartening uh despite having a favorite like Hera or Kanan show up um they want more of the bad batch so I think it was cool that they had that 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 meeting I think the next episode will help make this episode stronger yeah as they it's like need a two-part bad batch in there a lot more because both my kids were the same way they're like why is it called bad batch if it was just about you know the bad batch were in for one episode like one scene essentially and i was like yeah i did the same explanation kind of thing but yeah they were kind of disheartened and my daughter's a huge omega fan so she wanted to see more of her and yeah. things like that but if this is a three episode arc which i think it might be and then I the next so three well. is the finale yeah you, if you watch it like a movie then it it makes sense it's like oh okay now the bad batch come oh now they're gonna come and potentially save hair a hair goes off with them and then, you know, maybe flies a bit, whatever helps them. And, and maybe they're, they're pinned down so Hera has to fly the ship with them. And they're like, oh, okay, you know, and she kind of, they drop her off with Sid and Sid gets her into Rebellion. We'll kind of see how it happens. But I think they're going to be an instrumental in kind of getting her and getting this Rebellion started, getting her with Saw or, or, or however they connect and getting things going. So I think... Uh, when you watch the episodes all together as like one event, one movie, I think it would be more complete and I think the kids would enjoy it more. I agree. I'm, yeah, it's hard because this was just a half an hour section of it, essentially. Yeah. And um, yeah, it just, you know, wasn't the the most for them and most entertaining. But yeah, definitely as a as a three part movie, it would be amazing. Like the, this is just a beginning opening and then you get the, you know, more meat and more action mm. down the line. But it would be a great storyline as well. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, folks. That's our thoughts on Devil's Deal, an excellent episode. We definitely recommend you watch it. But let us know what you think. Drop a comment below, like the video, click that subscribe button. And as always, friends, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.